This year marks the 100th anniversary of the discovery of Tutankhamun's tomb. And even after all this time, the famous burial site is still revealing its secrets and stirring up controversy. Was the tomb truly built for the boy pharaoh? Or was it actually for a queen lost to history? Are there any unexplored chambers holding up baffling secrets of the past? What is hiding behind those walls covered with rural murals and hieroglyphics? The site of Nefertiti's tomb is one of the longest-running archaeological mysteries that has left experts puzzled for decades. But a radar survey around the tomb of Tutankhamun may hold evidence of the missing queen. Welcome to Crunch! In today's video, we will see whether the archaeologists have discovered the lost tomb of Queen Nefertiti. Big claims about fresh finds made by Zahir Hawass a few months back have renewed the hopes for a breakthrough in the search for Nefertiti's lost burial. The mysterious, elusive, and fascinating nature of Nefertiti's narrative explains why the impeding disclosure is already making headlines in media outlets all over the world. Hawass believes that one of the mummies he is currently investigating is of Queen Nefertiti. Along with an archaeological team, he started an investigation for the Queen's tomb on the west bank of Luxor on December 9, 2021. Nefertiti, who was married to Pharaoh Akhenhanaten and was the stepmother of Tutankhamun, is believed to have ruled Egypt between 1370 and 1330 BC in an era of immense luxury. DNAs of Akhenaten to Amenhotep II or III from the 18th dynasty are already known. Apart from this, there are two unnamed female mummies labelled KV-21A and KV-21B discovered by Giovanni Belzoni in 1817. When the mummies were re-examined in 2010, the research concluded KV-21A was likely the biological mother of the two offspring found in King Tut's tomb. However, the evidence was declared insufficient to confirm that this mummy, no older than 21 at the time of her death, was Ankhesanamun, Tutankhamun's wife. The mummy Hawass believes to be Nefertiti is the other one, KV-21B, who would have been 45 years old at the time of her death. Tutankhamun's tomb has been poured over with countless Egyptologists and archaeologists studying every crevice meticulously. More than three millennia after Tutankhamun was buried, Egyptologists are still squabbling over whom the chamber was built for. The debate has spread across the world, and at the center of the rumpus is the confrontational enthusiast Nicholas Reeves. Back in 2015, Reeves, a former curator of the British Museum and the Metropolitan Museum of Art, poised a tantalizing theory that there were rooms hidden behind the northern and western walls of the treasure-packed burial vault of Tutankhamun. King Tut's treasures were worth at the time of the tomb's discovery to be about $15 million. Reeves realized that cartouches depicting Tutankhamun being buried by his pharaonic successor, I, had been painted over cartouches of Tutankhamun bearing his stepmother, Nefertiti, the legendary beauty, queen of Egypt and wife of King Akhenaten. He came up with his hypothesis after spending more than a year studying laser scans used to create an exact replica of King Tut's burial chamber. The Egyptian government commissioned the replica to ease tourist pressure on the real one. His theory was backed up by initial research later that year. A team of archaeologists, led by former Egyptian Minister of Antiquities Mamdo Aldamati, turned to high-tech radar technology to analyze the area surrounding the 3,400-year-old tomb. They detected evidence of an unknown corridor, meters away from the pharaoh's burial chamber that led to a 32-foot-wide chamber. However, three years later, in a sudden scientific twist, a different team found evidence refuting the theory. Francesco Porcelli of the Polytechnic University of Turin and his team spent three years exploring the area around the pharaoh's tomb. The extensive studies conducted by the Italian team using ground-penetrating radar showed that the tomb did not contain any hidden man-made blocking walls, as was earlier suspected. Whether or not the tomb contains hidden chambers, there's only one way to know for sure. But given the priceless nature of this site, knocking down a bunch of walls is not exactly a well-received proposition. 
Just when we think the debate has a conclusion, a new study emerges, throwing the mystery back into the headlines. Researchers have paid particular attention to the size, as it is pretty small for a king's tomb, and the design of the tomb is quite odd. The chambers range from 2.3 meters, 7 feet 7 inches, to 3.6 meters, 12 feet high, and the floors of the annex, burial chamber, and treasury are about 0.9 meters, 2 foot 11, below the floor of the antechamber. During the Smithsonian Channel's documentary Secrets, Tut's Tomb, Egyptologist Chris Knowlton noted something striking about the design. He explains that one of the first things you notice when you come down the descending passageway of the tomb, you need to take a right turn, which is quite unusual for 18th century dynasty tombs, because in most cases, what you would expect of a pharaoh's tomb would be a left-hand turn. In ancient Egypt, the left was a symbol of masculinity, so important that the entrance to every king's tomb during Tut's dynasty consists of an immediate turn to the left. The only other right-hand turn is in the tomb of Hatshepsut, a female pharaoh. So, in the case of the tomb of Hatshepsut, a right turn means the tomb of a female pharaoh. Shouldn't we not be expecting the burial of the male king Tutankhamun, but a female pharaoh instead, more specifically, Nefertiti? Dr. Yasmin El Shazli, Deputy Director for Research and Programs at the American Research Center in Egypt, has studied Tut's death mask, noting peculiar signs of another identity in its design. Also, experts widely agree with her that Tutankhamun's canopic jars have features that are more similar to that of a woman than a man. Even English archaeologist Professor Joan Fletcher suggested that the mask was not made for an adult male pharaoh, as it shows the pharaoh with pierced ears. However, this theory was refuted by Egyptologist Zahi Hawass, former Minister of State for Antiquities Affairs. According to him, Fletcher's theory about ear piercing is unfounded because all the 18th dynasty rulers wore earrings during their period of rule, and the mask does not bear the name of Queen Nefertiti either. Rather, the golden mask bears a hieroglyphic text engraved on its back, which is believed to be a magical writing, like a spell, the purpose of which is to help the deceased in the Passover to the other world with the writings mentioning several names usually used to refer to King Tut, like Ra and Nebra, amongst other names. Is Zahi Hawass about to make the discovery of the century, or could it only be a marketing gimmick to get him some airtime? And if the results of KV-21B vary from the claim made by Hawass, is there still a possibility that the Queen is hiding behind the false walls of Tut's tomb? Or is she resting in a place archaeologists are completely unaware of? What are your thoughts on this? Leave us a comment below. Also, if you liked the video, do not forget to give it a thumbs up. As always, thanks for watching Crunch History. Subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon to get notified whenever we upload new amazing content.